time, I would invite our young people to come and join me up here. And boys, if you can hear us downstairs in the nursery area, you can bring the kiddos up. <laughs> How are you girls today? Good. And tired, yes. <laughs> Oh, I think I hear them coming. We'll see here if they join us. There they come. <laughs> well, what is today? I'm sure you guys know what today is. I'm Mother's, Mother's Day. Yes. Are you going to come join us, Aaliyah? Come on. Yeah. I know. Oh, there you go. Are you going to show off? Come on. Big girl. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's faster anyway, huh? Hi, Kendall, come on. Good morning. Do you want to come and join us? We have new friends here today. Hello. Well, we were just talking about how today is Mother's Day. Can you guys tell me some reasons why are moms so special? Yeah, come on. Why are moms so special? Uh, they give us food. They give us food. That is a good until thing. Until we're old enough to take care of ourselves. That is so true. They take care of us until you're old enough to take care of yourselves. What other reasons are moms so special? Because they created us. Created you? Yes. Are there any other things? What do you love about your mommy? Is she nice? Yes, your mommy is very nice. Kendall, what do you love about mommy? My daddy is my <laughs> Somebody's a daddy's girl. <laughs> what do you love about mommy? <laughs> do you love mommy snuggles? Or do you just like it when mommy embarrasses you and makes it shy? <laughs> okay, we can be shy. What about you guys? Do you have anything? Yeah. Help you learn to cook? Absolutely. Yeah. So moms do a lot of very special things for us, don't they? They, they love us. They're, they're there for us in a lot of ways. And then there are other people in our life. Do you have any other special people in your life that help love you and take care of you? Yes, they are very nurturing and sweet people as well, aren't they? So today is a day that we celebrate moms and mother figures in our life. And here in just a little bit, we are going to learn about the founding mothers of Mother's Day. This is something really cool about the United Methodist Church or Methodist churches. Do you have any idea? Bella kind of is going to be able to cheat on this because she already had worship with me once today. But do you have any idea who started the Mother's Day tradition? Who do you think started Mother's Day? I don't know, but probably a woman. It was a woman. And we are going to learn about her later. She was a Methodist woman of all things. And so maybe some of them don't know this either. And for the last few weeks, I've been talking about women in the Bible and women in ministry from the very beginning of the first churches that were formed until now. And so today we are going to learn about them a little bit more. Oh, be careful. <laughs> Do, you Do you remember her name? Uh, yeah. Um, oh, no, that's Naomi, Naomi but she Naomi. was one, she's the lady we're going to talk about in the oh. scripture later, so oh. we'll get to that too in just a little bit. But today, I would love it if you guys would tell any of the women here that you guys think are pretty amazing women, especially your moms, to have a happy Mother's Day, and then go a little bit further than that. And maybe tell them something that you appreciate about them. Some way that you think that you are, or they are very special to you. Could you guys do that for me? Yes. I think they would enjoy it very much. Let's say a prayer, and then you guys can get some candy. Do you want some candy? 
Oh yeah, huh? <laughs> okay, let's say a prayer real quick. Lord, I give you so much thanks for all of these children, for the ways that they bring so much happiness and joy to our lives. And I especially give you thanks for the mothers in their life and the mother figures. And for all women today, the ways that they nurture others, the way that they show their love and especially your love in this world. Lord, we pray all of this in your name. Amen. Kendall, do you want to show us where the candy basket is? And Rich is going to share some special music with us this morning. You want to grab that, Kendall? Oh, yes. Here, Kendall, bring it over here so we can share with our friends. You want to choose that one? That's a great one to choose. Do you want to choose one? Which one looks like the one? Oh, a pink one. Oh, purple. That's a good choice, too. Did you get some, Clara? Yes. yes. Awesome. All right. Oh. oh, come here. Come here. <laughs> there we go. Here. Do you want a fruit snack? There we go. All right. You guys want to go back and play with the toys? Thank you. You guys can go play and we'll see you in just a little bit, okay? <laughs> That was really a good opening, uh, by the way, for this song. Uh, you'll have to imagine that this song was probably written by a well, four or five year old on Mother's Day. And uh, it's kind of a, a little bit different one than, whoops, let me find it here. <laughs> here it is. <laughs> I gotta go slow enough so everyone can hear all these words. Every day you keep me safe and warm and loved and fed But today's your special day It was my turn instead So I got up at 5 a.m. Been working hard since then Some things I didn't get quite right Next year I'll try again just for you, I did my best to cut my own hair. Some places came out pretty good. Some places are kind of bare. I washed your nicest clothes, but the washer wasn't free. So I used the dishwasher. Pretty smart of me. Remember, no one's perfect. Every kid has faults. Remember, it's the thought that counts more than the results. My heart was in the right place, even though I did it wrong. It was all to say on Mother's Day, my love for you is strong. I vacuumed really quietly. I didn't use the power. I cleaned your dirty iPad. I held it in the shower, painted all the ceilings. It was easy with my mop. Now the carpets are painted too with cool raindrops. drops. I answered all your work emails with just leave me alone. And we gave the prince of Scandinavia a loan. I watered all the houseplants with a garden hose. Forgot to shut it off. Sometimes that's how it goes. Remember, no one's perfect. Every kid has faults. Remember, it's the thought that counts more than the results. My heart was in the right place, even though I did it wrong. It was all to say on Mother's Day, my love for you is strong. Your car is shiny inside out with lots of olive oil. We knew that oatmeal, who knew that oatmeal splattered up so high and far on boil. I tried to make you orange juice, but I spilled it on the floor. 
tried to fry you bacon we don't have a stove no more remember that no one's perfect every kid has his faults remember it's the thought that counts more than the results my heart was in the right place even though i did it wrong it was all to say on mother's day my love for you is strong since you really can't cook this week i called the pizza place i emptied out the fridge and freezer so there's enough space they should be here anytime two dozen pizza pies i paid with your credit card i hope you are surprised remember no one's perfect every kid has faults Remember it's the thought that counts more than the results My heart was in the right place even though I did it wrong It was all to say on Mother's Day My love for you is strong Thank you so much. That was hit home on some of those. Thank you so much, Rich. Very perfect for us this morning. Good morning. Uh, one of the things I love about being United Methodist is how inclusive we are um, locally and globally. Um, and as I was reading through um, our call to worship and our response, just how wonderful we acknowledge all the people who go into raising us. Um, and I was just so blessed because I fit many of those categories myself and also many people who have parented me or reparented me um, fit those categories. So that just um, really touched my heart. And thank you for that love. Our scripture today is going to talk about family that's being built, not that we're born to, and uh, a great story of mentorship and also servant heart. Ruth 1, 6 through 18, Naomi and her Moabite daughters-in-law. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had consideration for his people and had given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with me <clears throat> and, the, and dealt with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will not return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they're grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. It has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more to you as well, even if death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen.
I chose the story of Naomi because I think it really does capture so much of what it is like to be part of a Christian family. The different mother figures who come into our life, different people who love us and nurture us throughout different chapters of our story. This past week, I've really been thinking a lot about the different spiritual moms I have had. I have a very, very wonderful mother. She's my best friend, and I love her with all of my heart. I am so blessed for that. But she has also made sure that there have been amazing, strong mother figures in my life. People that I have grown to know, she taught me the characteristics to look for in influences in my life and people that I will look up to throughout my life. Some of those people have been people that I've grown very close to through mentor relationships in the church. And one that has really been standing out to me over the last few weeks is a lady named Millie Horlicker. Millie was a lady, she's still there, um, in the Colby Church where I used to serve. Millie has a heart for serving. She fostered almost 100 children, I don't know the exact number, but opened her home up over and over through the years to provide emergency foster care, long-term foster care, and she was a mother herself. She was a spiritual mother, as I mentioned, to me and to so many people. And she wrote this book of meditations called Season of Salt that we've been reading during our Bible study time at Skyline each week. And this week, there was one that just really stuck out to me. And I just want to summarize all of it for you a little bit. She calls it dish rags. She talked about growing up as a young child herself. They were pretty poor. They did not have a lot of money. And so when it came to the cooking and cleaning up of home and different places in her life, they used dish rags not dishcloths, these were truly rags. Scrap pieces of old shirts or different uh, pillowcases or whatever it was that was falling apart that they could use to scrub. She says very rarely did they actually have dishcloths. Her mom owned one nice set, but it only came out to clean up possibly Christmas dishes after they had already been rinsed off because they didn't want to ruin those dishcloths. Millie talks about how later on in her life, she realized that there's no reason to put away the dishcloths. Pull them out and use them. You can't take any of the materialistic things with you. So make memories with those dishcloths. It's okay to use them. And yes, they're going to get tattered, but you're teaching, you're making messes, you're doing all of these things with the dishcloths, and maybe eventually they become dish rags, but you can continue to buy new dishcloths. They will continue to come. What you can't continue is to have more and more time to make these memories. I was visiting with Lila, who is another spiritual mother in my life, who I've been so, so grateful to have in my life. And Terry came in, and Terry begins telling me, you know, life is like a roll of toilet paper. The closer that you get to the end of the roll, the faster it goes. And as I walked away that day, I was reminded that he's so right. It is those little tidbits of advice, those little conversations, the love that we share with each other that matter the most. And so today, I thought it was appropriate to talk about women in particular because it's Mother's Day and to give thanks for them and to celebrate the many different role models and spiritual lovers and nurturers in our life who have encouraged us all along our way. The scripture reading that we read here, or Heather read for us, thank you very much, um, read here about Naomi takes place in the book of Ruth. I think most of us know Ruth's story. We're pretty familiar with her. But just before where the scripture reading picks up today, we learn that Naomi and Ruth and Orpah, the other daughter that they talk about, have all become widows. 
their husbands have passed. Naomi is not only grieving her husband, but she is also grieving her sons. And she has these two young women, the wives of her sons, her daughters-in-law, that are grieving their husbands. And she just wants the best for them. She says, I am not really worth anything to all of you anymore. What else can I give you? I can't give you new husbands, and I want you to have the absolute very best life that you can have. So go back to your home. Go back to your own mother's. Find a husband who will take care of you. Enjoy the rest of your life. And what I really love about Naomi's presence is this story is we see how she supported both of the girls. I know as a mom of five, all of my kids are so very different and they all need loved and nurtured in very different ways. And that's one thing that Naomi recognized. Orpah decided to go on back and she supported her in that. She loved her and she blessed her on her way. But Ruth clung to her. She clung to her and said, no, I don't want to go back. Wherever you go, I'm going to go too. And your God, the one that you have taught me about those seeds that you have planted about faith, your God's my God too. And I want to be a part of that. So I don't care if we're going to this strange land where I'm not going to be like the rest of them. I will have you. And I know that you will love me and encourage me along the way. And so wherever you go, I am going. Naomi let her come. At the end of our scripture reading today, it says that she was determined to go with her, so she said no more. I found myself doing that sometimes. I call it picking my battles with my children. There might be something that I really think that they should do a, a different way, but I realize that they are very determined. And so at that moment, I accept it, and I say, okay, I'll encourage you on this, and I'm not going to say any more. You will have my love and my blessing. Now, what's really a significant part, and maybe I should have included this in the reading, is that just after this, they head out, and they begin going back to Naomi's homeland. They're headed toward Judah, but they enter the town of Bethlehem. And when they do, Naomi is recognized. The crowd begins calling out, or a small crowd, I would imagine. And they're like, Naomi, is that you? I think we recognize you. Could it really be you? And she says, do not call me Naomi. You see, bad things have happened in my life, and I feel like the Lord has maybe turned his back on me. I'm bitter at the Lord right now. And so, instead of calling me Naomi... Call me Mara. Mara translates to bitter. I know as a mom, that is a lesson that I have had to learn over and over. It is something I will continue to learn over and over. That sometimes it just feels like things have not gone right. Circumstances that were out of my control make me feel like maybe I'm not doing my best job as a mother. And maybe I get mad at God a little bit for it. But what's significant about this is that that is the only time that the author allows herself in this story to call herself Mara. Beyond that, Ruth and Naomi, in journeying on, they end up having these huge blessings come in their life. They don't give up on their faith. They continue to stick together, and Naomi continues to encourage Ruth. She truly becomes a mother to her. And it is an absolutely amazing story. I love the different ways of family that we are able to read into this story. The ways that sometimes we send our children on their own. We let them spread their wings and fly and maybe we lose connection. But also the ways that sometimes we just have to quiet down and realize that our kids are very determined and they've made up their mind and we support them and encourage them along the way. I love the ways that she's able to be the significant faith leader and spiritual mother to her daughters-in-laws. But there are times that she feels guilty as a parent, as we all do. And then we remember through the words of this story that God continues to bless her. And those feelings are short-lived and that we will continue on and that life will continue to be blessed as long as we keep our faith. 
Now to switch gears just a little bit, I want to jump ahead much farther down the Christian timeline than this story of Naomi and Ruth happened. In the early church, in the ancient church, from the very beginning of time, do you know who it was that opened up their doors so that churches could meet in secret because they were threatened to be persecuted? It was women. The women were the first ones that sat and began teaching others about Jesus. The women were the one who prepared huge mills. The women were the one that would welcome new baptis or baptisms. They would help those that were coming to be baptized down into the pool and bring them out on the other side, placing a white robe around them. From the very beginning of churches, women have been there to nurture and support and love each other all along the way. The Methodist Church is no different. As I mentioned last week, just to recap for those of you who might not have been here, John Wesley was a big believer in women and ministry. From the very beginning, in the mid-1700s, he blessed women to go out and preach. Despite some of the male clergy at that time having issues with it, he sent them on their way. He sent them in the world to go preach. The Methodist Church has had a significant role in supporting and nurturing children throughout the world. In many, many ways, we are known for our mission, for helping to feed children, for helping to make sure that they have medical care, for recognizing injustices and standing up for it. And one thing that I love, as Heather mentioned too, the Methodist Church is so supportive to each other, for including everyone in any walk of path that you are in. So today I want to celebrate the ways that our formational women in ministry help to initiate this holiday that we celebrate now. And I have a little video on it because I think that it's fun to look back at the pictures. So let's go ahead and watch this video on the Methodist Church and the founding of Mother's Day. When uh, Ann Jarvis was working to establish Mother's Day as a national event and when her daughter picked up the mantle from her, they were not thinking about um, greeting cards and flowers. Instead, the Methodist women who invented the idea in America wanted to honor mothers in a deeper way. Uh, they were thinking about the work of women and the significant uh, testimony that women could give about the need for peace. Anne Reeves Jarvis organized women's clubs in the 1860s to serve suffering mothers and children. Women came together with their sisters in their locations uh, to respond to the needs that they could see. For Anne, she was in a coal mining part of what is now West Virginia, and uh, she could see the needs of women and children, and she could see the effects of the economy of her day on the people that she cared for. She started mother's clubs and she taught them about hydration for fevered babies, about sanitation and nutrition. Then the Civil War came along and they put a field hospital right outside Grafton. Anne recruited nurses for military hospitals and after the war formed friendship clubs to promote reconciliation. Anne Jarvis uh, was convinced that mothers women, but especially mothers, had to work for peace because they could see the ravages of war in their husbands and in their sons in a way that uh, was so focused and so clear that uh, their voices would be uh, powerful. And that's what's at the genesis of the current Mother's Day. Faith was always foremost. When she was older, Ann Jarvis and her daughter Anna became members of Philadelphia's St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church. The daughter Anna became a Sunday school teacher here at, at St. George's, but she's best known for the efforts she made to get Mother's Day recognized as a national observance. She and John Wanamaker, who was a famous retailer here, were the ones that got Woodrow Wilson to sign the petition. Ann Jarvis died in 1905, before an official holiday was in place. But her daughter Anna, who was never a mother herself, stayed true to the purpose of the celebration. 
she envisioned Mother's Day as a time to write a personal letter to your mother, a time to send her an inexpensive carnation, a flower in which the petals hold tight like a mother's love, and a time to visit or attend church together. She later became an outspoken critic when the special day turned too commercial. She was really aggravated at people that turned that observation into a commercial outlet. So she had a lot to say to Hallmark. She had a lot to say to the Salvation Army that started selling carnations. When she made carnations the symbol of Mother's Day, they sold for pennies. But their price soon went up to $1.50, $2 a piece because people found they could make money off of it. And her, her comments about Hallmark are just wonderful. She said, how lazy can you be to buy somebody else's sentiment to hand to your mother? Like one day out of the year, sit down and tell your mother what you really think of her. And she was just furious. And I, I just, I like, love that kind of song. She would have been a really interesting person to know. And I like telling the kids about her because it, the history of the church isn't a history of ministers. It's the people that make up the church. And I think there's such a wonderful example of that. And, and besides, you know, making kids think about their mothers is always a, a good thing to do. <laughs> To all of the women throughout history, to all of the women beyond our church walls who have fought for peace, who stand up for children, who encourage them and support them and give them love. Today, we give thanks. And to all of you who are mothers in any way, whether you are a biological mom or you are one of the spiritual mamas who help nurture our kids and our church, we give you thanks. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>